Radar Chaos Hawaii edition, and it's focused on the airport of Lihu on the island of Kauai. Right now we've got to five aircraft in the arrival queue, and I'll show you how we put them onto the localizer. And a word of warning, any video that's about a radar game tends to be a little bit boring because there is there are periods of silence and things happen kind of slowly, so just bear with me. The first aircraft in the queue is United 204. They're showing a ground speed of 220 knots. It's actually an indicated airspeed of 200 knots. That's because of uh, airspeed, true airspeed error, but that's uh, normal in real life as well. 200 knots is an appropriate speed for an aircraft on a base leg for the localizer. It's now time to uh, turn our next arrival aircraft and give them an appropriate altitude of 3,000 feet and a heading of 080, which is a 90 degree angle to the localizer. This Air Canada 450 can have 3,000 feet. I won't be paying any attention to the departures because this is about vectoring arrivals only. Okay, it's time to turn this aircraft towards the localizer. The localizer has a uh, direction of 350 degrees magnetic, which means that an intercept heading would be 320, or if you're intercepting from the west side like Qantas is, it would be a heading of 020. This aircraft is at an appropriate speed of 200 knots, shown in the aircraft's control panel. It's at an altitude of 3,000 feet and it's intercepting beyond 10 miles. 10 miles is this triangle right here. So this aircraft has everything that it needs except I haven't given it the approach clearance. There. The aircraft now has the approach clearance. The aircraft now has permission to intercept that localizer and descend upon its glide path when it reaches the uh, ILS glide path. It's a good time to turn this Air Canada flight to a heading of 260, which happens to be 90 degrees to the uh, localizer. And I don't know if you saw it, but I got the hula girl popping up telling me I did a good job. This American can be brought down to 4,000 feet. I'm only giving 4,000 to American just because I've got Air Canada here at 3 and I would like to keep something built in just in case, in case uh, American overtakes Air Canada and I run out of my necessary 3 miles separation. You're probably wondering what these two lines mean. That's telling me that in exactly 2 minutes I'm going to have uh, a loss of separation between Qantas and Air Canada. But that's fine. I'm turning Qantas to an intercept heading of 020 and I'm giving them the approach clearance. They're at an appropriate altitude. They're at an appropriate speed. Oop, actually, they're a bit fast. I'll slow them down. So now those warnings have gone away. Air Canada, I'm going to slow them down to about 200 knots. WestJet, I'm going to give them 200 knots as well because there's no point in running WestJet southbound at high speed when they're just going to wind up with a very, very long final approach path. You might notice the types on these aircraft are all heavy category aircraft. If you're not familiar with the categories of uh, aircraft weight, that's fine. It's Boeing 747s, Boeing 767s, they are considered heavy aircraft, which means that three miles isn't always enough spacing. You need a little bit more. If you have a heavy aircraft following a heavy aircraft, for example, you should normally apply four miles of separation in trail. That's advanced. You don't have to worry about it in Radar Chaos Hawaii Edition, but if you want to play it like uh, they do in real life, you would want to uh, understand these wake turbulence requirements. Air Canada can be turned to a heading of 320 and given an approach clearance. American can be given 3,000 feet. Wesh at 239 is still at 6,000 feet. That's because I'm so busy talking, I neglected to uh, give them lower. So, controlling aircraft into the runway environment is just like dealing with a bunch of trained pigs. You just tell them where to go, and that's where they go. You'll notice that uh, I've got uh, quite a bit of space between all these aircraft. If I count the miles on the localizer, you can see that uh, Qantas is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 miles behind United 204. And that's, that's going to reduce, because United is slowing down. They'll slow down to about 140, and Qantas is still 
ground speeding at 220, but I'm still going to have more space than I need. That's a safe way to control air traffic, but it's not necessarily that efficient. The ideal is to have United 204 touching down with Qantas 841 three miles final directly by, or pardon me, four miles final. WestJet needs a turn, heading 260. Air Canada 450 did a nice 30 degree intercept. They're a little fast, I'll slow them down. Aircraft will slow down by themselves in real life. When an aircraft reaches 3,000 feet, they know that they must slow down to uh, about 200 knots. But in this simulation, we uh, that happens when the aircraft establishes itself on final approach on the on the ILS. They'll slow down by themselves. But I like to uh, I like to give a lot of speed assignments, and that's just personal preference. I really like to control everybody. I'm going to see if I can tighten things up just a little bit here because this Air New Zealand's coming and I'm starting to run out of room. So how I can tighten things up is by uh, giving American a little more speed, maybe 220 knots. Air Canada 450 is doing 200 knots. Wesh at 239, I don't want them any closer because uh, we talked about wake turbulence. Well, this is a Boeing 737, which happens to be a medium category. Now, when a medium is following a heavy, you actually need five miles. Again, don't worry about this if you're new to air traffic control simulations. Just keep them apart by three miles or a thousand feet vertically. But I like to try and make it as real as I can for myself. This Air New Zealand 757, their flight plan is direct the South Kauai VOR, direct the Lihu VOR. And then what? Well, that's up to me. I give vectors. So this aircraft's probably wondering what is next for them. Well, I'll give them a turn southbound to a heading of 170. Why 170? It's the reciprocal of the ILS approach. It makes it nice and simple, nice and tidy. This aircraft will now fly parallel to the approach path, and they'll follow nicely in behind WestJet 239. I'm going to tighten these. I'm going to give WestJet 239 an early turn towards the localizer, and if I bring up the future paths, you'll see that it is uh, it's going to be on this intercept angle for quite a few miles, but uh, it's cutting the corner, basically. I just want to tighten things up so Qantas, pardon me, Air New Zealand up here, doesn't have to fly all the way down to the South Pole to follow with traffic. What I'll do with Air New Zealand as well is I'll, I'll have them slow down, which is uh, not easy when you're descending. It's difficult to descend and slow down, but I will ask for it anyways. You may be wondering, why is this aircraft grounding 290 knots when he's been assigned such a lower speed? If you've read the instructions to this game, you'll know that there are errors on an aircraft's airspeed indicator, and this is due to um, air density. An airspeed indicator is a fantastic tool to fly by. It protects you from things like stalls or uh, overspeeding the wings, but in the end it's really just a fancy tire pressure gauge and at higher altitudes where the air is thin airspeed indicators tend to underread. so I've told him to fly a speed of 210 knots well he's actually going to be flying at 240 that may seem strange to you but it is precisely how it is in the real world and I don't believe it's a realistic air traffic control simulation if it doesn't have if it doesn't obey this model of airspeed so how are we doing here? We've got uh, one mile, two miles, three miles, four miles, six miles between these two aircraft. That's plenty. Air Canada is slowing down. American's been told to go fast. Looks like he's already slowing himself down. So I'm I'm applying much more room than I really need. I'll see how tightly I can get Air New Zealand 757 in behind this WestJet, just just for practice sake, just to see how how tight I can do it. And the ideal is to get this aircraft exactly three miles in trail. This is a situation where it's a medium aircraft followed by a heavy category aircraft. So 
I can put them exactly three miles apart on the localizer and feel good about it. One thing I like to do when I'm controlling is I like to turn off the overlay that you just saw, this here. Uh, I've memorized the details and I, I like to simplify my screen as much as I can. This aircraft needs a turn. I started this aircraft's turn when its traffic was roughly at its 10 o'clock position. So he is really, at this point it looks like I'm driving him right at his traffic. But by the time the aircraft gets onto the localizer, it will have no less than three miles. I see I've got an arrival coming in from the west. Looks like United 669. Where's he coming from? Let me just take a look at the uh, flight data board here. And he is coming from... Okay. He's coming from some point west. Couldn't quite read it just because of all the uh, video software I've got running at this time. So here's Air Canada 450 just about to touch down, and they're grounding 150 knots, and they'll disappear off radar in a moment. And I've got American 636 exactly five miles behind them, which is one mile more than I needed, but that's fine. The old saying is, add an extra mile for every kid you have. That's a joke. Okay, we'll turn Air New Zealand in a little bit early here because, I, like I said, I wanted to try and make things as tight as I could. And looking at the future path, it shows that this aircraft will intercept at 11 miles final. And I did it again. I put in way too much space, but that's okay. This United is way up there, still at 17,000 feet, 170. needs to come down. So I gave him uh, an assignment to expedite their descent. That little arc that you're seeing, that that green arc with the 30, that's from United 669, and it says that on that heading, at the current rate of descent, it will reach its assigned 3,000 feet at that point. So you have to mentally picture how United will be turned in a moment southbound onto that parallel downwind leg, and so I envision that they'll reach their 3,000 feet somewhere around here, and it will work out perfectly for us. So I didn't do a very good job of being efficient with Air New Zealand. He's uh, two, three, four, five, six miles behind his WestJet flight. By the time WestJet touches down, it'll probably look something like uh, it'll probably look something like about four or five. I think that's about all the fun I can squeeze into a 10-minute video. Pardon me, 12-minute video. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you have any questions at all, you can always email me, the creator, at bigfatsimulations.com. Thanks for watching.